Hello everyone uh, and welcome to our first ever episode of London Conversations. Uh, we're going to talk in today's episode about uh, how London's health tech ecosystem is driving innovation in the fight against COVID-19. And we're also going to talk about how globally leading companies and world-class universities are powering research. My name is Alban Remy uh, and I'm the head of uh, Innovation and Life Sciences at London Partners. I'm very pleased uh, to welcome Dr. Simon Epworth from Imperial College London today. And um, as the director of Imperial's enterprise division, uh, he has led the, the creation and the growth of a number of initiatives, um, such as Enterprise Lab, uh, Imperial Venture Mentoring Service, uh, and the White City Incubator. Uh, Simon, welcome. Thank you, Alban. Um, I've been doing a bit of spying off your uh, LinkedIn page, and I saw that you started your career as an engineer for um, a Ford uh, Motor Company. So what led you to support um, um, leading businesses, startups in, in London, including some health tech uh, companies? Yeah, I, I was, I think, blown away by the, the quality of the science and the people that I saw at Imperial College about 10 years ago when I was at a, a midpoint in my career as an engineer in, in the automotive industry. And the end of my time there was about business development, about bringing companies together to explore new technologies. And I was frustrated by the lack of technologies we had on the shelf. Um, hence coming to Imperial College where there was so much activity going on across many technologies and with a large medical faculty, it's quite clear that many of those were going to be in the health sector. So that was my transition from being an engineer into the health sector. Well, that's, uh, that's good for all the businesses that you're you opening. That, that kind of broad uh, spectrum and, and huge experience will be, uh, I'm sure, is hugely appreciated. Um, starting with, obviously, the, the main subject at the moment, which is, which is the COVID crisis, um, what are your thoughts around uh, London's, London's health tech uh, position sector um, to today in London? I think it's well poised at the moment. I think in the last few years, there's been, there's been lots of hard work to join up the different communities within London. And we now have clinicians, academics, startup entrepreneurs, large company, corporate scientists, regulators, funders, who are all self-aware and they all understand where they fit within an entrepreneurial ecosystem and what motivates them. And so I think we are now very well placed uh, to move on beyond the COVID response. Yeah, and for, for you specifically with uh, Impale, um, you've obviously supported lots of businesses across the, the years. Um, how do you keep that, that support flowing uh, in that crisis mode where I'm sure a lot of that, well, all of you must be working from home and, and uh, that remote support, how, how do you do it? Yeah, so first of all, we're, we're not all at home, so we have worked hard to keep open facilities for the companies, in particular, at our campus in White City, where we've got the incubator and the iHub. So that has remained open throughout for, for businesses to uh, continue to innovate in a socially distanced way. Uh, but you're right, we have also transitioned a lot of our services online um, with great success. So we, we ran an investment startup event a couple of weeks ago. Um, so this is a forum that we've run physically a few times and it's unique in that it's a platform that brings students and academics together, each promoting their, their startups for investment. We had double the audience at that event than we've had for physical events. And of course now we've got a, a physical asset in terms of the recording of the event where we've had a thousand downloads as well. So it's so far it's been a great and uh, entrepreneurial response to the, to the COVID outbreak. That's brilliant. That's brilliant to hear. And do you think that um, it will slightly change your ways of, uh, of working with Imperial in, in the future? I think it will. I, when I speak to, to Ben, who runs our enterprise lab, he tells me there's no way back from, from this. Um, it's just a far more enriched provision of services. Uh, the ability to record information to play back to people when they want it the fact that people can engage in our events and, and they don't need to travel which, which even in london that might be a minimum of a half hour journey so we're saving time for people as well by by being online um, 
talking a bit about the, the business resilience, obviously we've seen some uh, amazing um, actions and, and initiative from large companies, but um, it's probably the most interesting are our startups and, and the way that they're very agile and flexible to, to answer uh, uh, the, the, the challenges that uh, we, we're facing. And you obviously support a, a large number of, of those uh, small businesses. And um, do you have some examples in mind of, of uh, some of your companies that have done extremely well during the? the yeah, I'll, I'll pick two um, that I think have uh, impressed me in terms of what, what they've achieved. And the first one is Professor Chris Tumizu and his company called DNA Nudge, which was a, I, I would call it as a lifestyle or a consumer company. It's where it nudged you on your shopping choices based on your DNA profile. To, to make you healthier and, and fitter. And he's pivoted that to be a COVID-19 testing company. And it's a lab free test. So it's, it's, people can use it without having to send off the samples to a lab. And seeing him dressed in his PPE in St. Mary's Hospital during the outbreak, validating his, his product, it just reminded me of the, the inspiration and the dedication that we see from, from our people in London to progress these technologies. So that, that really impressed me. Um, another one that I think is very smart is Medisieve. So they're, they're a company in the incubator at White City. They, they have a magnetic blood filtering technology. And originally that was purpose for malaria and for sepsis. But now again, they've pivoted and they're looking at that as a potential treatment for, for COVID-19. So I think it's fantastic ingenuity, resilience, um, opportunism, if you like, uh, that we're seeing, I think that's, that's defined London's response. Well, that's actually a nice segue to my next question around um, London. So obviously, London and Partners' uh, job is um, also to support international companies to expand to, to London. And what do you think makes the health tech sector in London so special uh, and probably even more in those time of crisis? Yeah, I, I think the strength of the academic research base is a key part of that. So we have many great universities, Imperial, UCL, King's, the Crick, Queen Mary, and they pro provide a fantastic critical mass of academic researchers. And they're all embedded with the hospitals local to them. So that gives great reality in terms of clinicians as part of the teams and also access to patient populations for the technologies that emerge. We've got a fantastic entrepreneurial scene. There's new funding coming all the time. We have a new innovation fund at Imperial that we've just launched, for example. I think London is a, a great hotspot for AI. So we've seen that in recent years and that brings precision to medical imaging as an example. And I think now we're seeing places where large companies like Novartis and L'Oreal can co-locate alongside entrepreneurs, startups, academics, and NHS workers. And we see that at the White City Innovation District next to Imperial. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. That was pretty much uh, everything that we wanted to discuss with you. And um, before we start the video, was there anything uh, specific coming up with Imperial that you wanted to, to flag to our audience? Yeah, I, I think we have an exciting time ahead with the launch of the Biomedical Engineering Hub at White City. So this is the, the next one of our research hubs that brings together different disciplines. And in this, we've got musculoskeletal bioengineers, and they're working alongside researchers from the Dementia Research Institute, and also in public health and air quality and in cancer technologies. So it's a great fusion of academics that we're bringing to that facility. And we'll have some clinical provisions in there as well. So we're thinking about living labs as a, as a concept, for example. That sounds uh, really exciting. Looking forward to uh, hearing the, the results of that. Well, uh, Simon, thank you very much for, for being the first in our uh, series of uh, London Conversation. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Thank you.